and welcome to Night Hunter Books. Today we're going to be doing our March wrap up. The first part of the month I think was a little slow, but then I think we've caught up just in the last week. Uh, I think I had no books until about a week ago, now I have three, so that's something. Take it away. First book I'd like to talk about is, contrary to the cover, A City Dreaming by Daniel Polanski, which I, I received as a free arc last year at Nine Worlds, and actually came out the year before that. It's an interesting structure, one that I don't think I've read, at least not for quite a long time. The vast majority of the chapters are self-contained stories, about six to eight pages long. That's like flash fiction. Yeah. Uh, they're strung like beads on a string. They're serial, they have one character, um, but nonetheless they are just these very bite-sized stories, which are all a bit unsatisfying, honestly. Maybe if I'd been reading it as something like a webcomic, you know, an episode a week, it would have been better. Whereas reading it as a novel, it just felt a bit weird. Um, honestly, the only bits of it I'd recommend are about the last three chapters. They, they were really good. The character set is not hugely diverse. I honestly left this without any strong feelings either way. The first book I finished in March was My Year of Meats by Ruth Ozeki. This is the second book I've read by her. She also wrote uh, Tale for the Time Being, which I absolutely loved a couple of years ago. So I've been wanting to pick this up for a while, and I'm pleased to say I did really enjoy it. So I have a new author where I can pick up their works, which is great. Uh, I rated this four stars, so not quite as highly as Tale for the Time Being, um, but it was still a really good kind of solid book with an interesting premise where you follow a director who wants to be a documentary filmmaker uh, but has accepted a job to make a sort of documentary where she... And tutorials. Yeah, where she talks to American housewives um, and this is sponsored by Beef Exports and it's a TV show for a Japanese audience. So it's all about trying to sell beef to Japan um, but there's some really fun things she does with the documentary itself. So it starts off questioning what being an American wife looks like. Are they all man, woman, two kids? So that was kind of fun at the beginning. And then uh, as you get more into the book, then it does uh, deal more with the ethical side of meat production. So whether she actually wants to be promoting this stuff. Which I again found really interesting because I'm on a bit of a kick of vegetarian fiction at the moment. I'm not sure before meeting you I would have ever thought that there's such a thing as vegetarian fiction. <laughs> I'm finding it. Um, this also follows a wife of one of the people who works in Japan for the for Beefex. So you have her story at the same time. Um, and these are really nicely interwoven and their their kind of lives do cross at various points. Um, but that means that actually, even though there's nothing written about it on the back, one of the key themes in this is very much fertility, pregnancy, what it means to want a family, um, alongside seeing all these American families all the way through. So, yeah, I found this really interesting and a little bit different. I liked the characters, although I know there were maybe some stereotypes for the Japanese characters. The documentarian character was really strong and I think that character might be almost a self-insert because uh, the author is, I think, um, kind of mixed race or has spent a lot of her time in America but is Japanese, yeah. um, which is the same as this character and I think they are also both vegetarian and both have worked in documentaries at some point, so that character was really strong and really interesting. So yeah, would recommend if any of that sounds interesting. My next one is The City Not Long After by Pat, Pat Murphy. And you will be able to gather this is not the newest book. I'm continuing my kick of trying to read books I've owned for a long time. I picked this up um, at an ex-library sale. It was published in 1981. Mm -hmm. And yet is surprisingly modern. It's set in San Francisco in a world not long after a plague, about a generation which has mostly dismantled the modern world. The city of San Francisco has become home to a band of misfits and artists and they end up using uh, non-violence 
to um, repel an invading army and use art to change their minds. It's not something I've ever heard of as part of the canon, but equally, I don't think it deserves to be as forgotten as it has been. The next book I read was Binti the Night Masquerade by Nelly Okorafor, which is the third in the Binti series of novellas, only Ickle books. Though this is the biggest Ickle book. Yes, this is 200 pages. So I really liked this, uh, I thought it was a satisfying ending to the series, I rated it four stars. This follows a young girl from the Himba tribe who is the first of her people to go to Space University. There's a lot of world building and that's one thing I really love about this, so I would be really interested to read more books in the world. It's got its own kind of mathematical magic system, which I really like. Arithmancy. <laughs> yeah. And I think after reading all three, I'd say like the main central theme is identity, where as she goes through the books, she kind of acquires more and more things that she can identify as. It's her trying to deal with, is she still Binti? Mm. And can she be all of these things at once? I think one of the things I've struggled with over the series a little, especially in the second book, was feeling like it didn't stand alone very well as one in a series and that it was trying to bridge the gap between the first and the second and then it kind of ended maybe a little abruptly um, or at least on a cliffhanger that can be intentional. This I think fared much better because that basically meant that this was the climax, the crescendo of the series and that meant that pretty much all of this book felt like it was at that kind of height of drama. I think as well by this point I've really got to know the characters, which is reasonably impressive given the short number of pages in the series, whereas I think in the first one then there wasn't enough space to have got to know them. One of the things that people might like or dislike is that it really plays with structure, and I quite enjoyed that, and it plays with expectations. So there were a few twists that I didn't expect. So if you've read the first couple, then I'd definitely recommend continuing with the series, um, and if you haven't picked them up before, then the first one's only short, I'd just suggest to give it a go, really, but potentially as an ebook rather than physical. My next book is another Tor.com novella, it's Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kaya Shanti Wilson, which is a proper genre bending book. The sorcerer in question is a guard on a caravan crossing the desert, wielding sword and spear and attempting to keep the caravan that he travels with safe. Both he and another character are related to figures that are now thought of as gods. He's travelling through cultures very different to the one he grew up in. It features some truly fascinating world building and queer protagonists of colour and it packs a surprising emotional punch for its size, uh, talking about what are you prepared to uh, give up in terms of your identity to uh, save those you love. But yes, I've been hearing good things and it is, I think, it, they're duly earned. The final thing that I read this month was Amulet Volume 3, The Cloud Searches, which feels a bit of a cheat. The thing is, I think it only took me about an hour to read, by Kazu Kabushi. So this is a series I've continued to enjoy. It follows a family, mainly uh, two siblings as they kind of fall through a portal into a realm and get embroiled in the goings on there, the politics and the evil ruler and rescuing their mother. These are ridiculously fast paced and very image heavy, so you're turning pages really fast. Um, but I think I'm starting to notice that the main kind of overarching plot doesn't feel like it gets very far in a single volume which doesn't make them feel the best value for money, I have to say. And as well, I'm not necessarily going to remember what's gone on in the ones before. So these very much feel like chapters of a longer story, but I think there's nine or so of these now. I think I do really like the fact that you've got a female and a male protagonist who feel like they've got very different things that they can bring to this ragtag team, which also includes um, kind of animated toys and robots. But I think this was the first book where I would got excited about the idea of a family going on an adventure together and I'm not sure that's really done as well as I'd like. In particular the mother 
He's very a, much in the background. Yeah, a bit of a stereotype as well, or a bit kind of, oh, don't do that, it's dangerous. Whereas mm. I much prefer the points where the mother smacks people over the head with frying pans. I think I will probably continue with the series, but I might have to see something more to make me want to go and read all of them. My last book is Elite by Mercedes Lackey, which is uh, the sequel to Hunter. Another genre smashing book. Uh, so this is set in a future with um, miniaturised drone cameras following people around and uh, concerns about privacy, all set in walled communities surrounded by um, folkloric monsters that are coming through and have uh, basically thrown the future into disarray. The protagonist in this finds a number of corpses and gets drawn into politics between various factions within the city and the threat from outside continues to ramp up and the fey that are driving the uh, attacks become more fleshed out and people start asking questions like so do they have internal politics what's their motivation what's going on and continuing to sort of build a, a richer and deeper world behind what's largely a fun series i'd love to see this made into a film this would be awesome i think the next volume is called apex and as soon as it's available in paperback in the UK, I'll be picking it up, I suspect. So that's everything we read in March. We also saw uh, Watch The Good Place in its entirety and Pacific Rim Uprising. Any thoughts about those? Especially given that two distinct episodes of The Good Place have been nominated for Hugos for Best Short Form Presentation. The Hugos are the awards um, handed out by Worldcon. They're the, I think, oldest, most established awards in... Uh, genre fiction and we will be in San Jose to see them hand out in August. So if you've read any of these then let us know. Should we keep continuing with Amulet? Does the story pace ramp up a bit? And is the other Ruth Ozeki that I haven't read as good as those two? Thank you for watching, we'll see you again soon!